the Grey Knight's Strike Squad box. This plastic packed $100 kit from Games Workshop gives you all the parts you need to assemble 10 Grey Knight miniatures. But how many more can we squeeze out of this box with a little help from 3D printed bits? The answer is a hell of a lot more. Stick around and I'll show you how you can do the same. There are a ton of bits in this kit, and it's been sitting on my shelf for a long time now because, frankly, I wasn't sure how I wanted to equip the 10 knights. And also, assembling minis from sprues feels like 10 times more work compared to printing minis. But I've found a way to utilize every last piece in this box so I don't have to worry about what weapons loadouts my guys have because I will have literally every single option available to me at the end of this video. And the key to it all is the Silver Wardens Nemestrike Marines STL Pack by DMG Minis. This is a fully modular kit with loads of torsos, heads, legs, weapons options, shoulder pads, the whole lot that will be perfect to proxy in for any missing bits from the Games Workshop box. I spoke with DMG Minis before making this video just to make sure he's cool with me talking about this and using them for this video and he graciously approved and even told me to tell you where you can find these sculpts if you're interested. So I'll leave links down in the video description to his Gumroad and Colts 3D stores where you can pick up these models too if you like. I figured the best place to start would be by assembling the 10 minis using only plastic parts. And since I'd be using every single bit in the box eventually, I didn't give too much weight to my choices here and sort of just winged it. I began by removing all the pieces I'd need from the sprues to make the Justica, cleaning up the edges a bit and gluing it together. Better drill the barrels too while I'm at it. Ah, shit. Um, never mind. I'll come back to that later, I guess. <laughs> you bitch. I decided to go with the big sword and severed demon head for this guy. And with him finished, I then set about removing all the other pieces from the sprues and sorting them into bins. After removing all the blade options, I realized, however, this was actually a terrible idea, as now I don't know what arms go with what. So I decided to leave any weapons and arms on the sprues for now and just removed everything else. Eye-watering amounts of cutting parts and scraping them clean later, and it's time to move on. There's still nine guys left in this box to build. Right, now with those guys finished, now was a good time to compare some test prints of the Nemestrike Marines to see how they'll fit with the GW stuff. I noticed there was a bit of scale difference but thankfully DMG Minis provided .lys files with his kit. And so rescaling the parts down to fit in Lychee Slicer was a breeze. And the thing I like about this is the support settings remain the same size and the tips of the supports remain where they should be. If you'd like to know more about Lychee Slicer, I have a couple of videos that might be worth checking out after this video. It's a really feature rich slicer that just gets a lot right. I found that scaling the parts down to 87.1% of their original size got me to right about where I needed to be. And so with a fresh batch of freshly printed and appropriately scaled Silver Warden's Nemestrike bits, I set about putting together 10 more miniatures, this time a concert of plastic and resin. With the rescaled resin parts, I found the GW bits to be highly compatible so far. The heads fit great, the dual-handed weapons weren't an issue other than the usual extremely fiddly assembly required for those, and the power packs, while not a perfect match, I think they've worked out well enough. The resin parts turned out fantastic. I printed these on an Anycubic Photon X, which has a 4K mono LCD, and to my eye look even sharper than the plastic bits, particularly in the fine lettering on the shoulder pads. Now, I'm not sure if that's because this is an older kit, but if you weren't convinced yet that 3D printing has achieved parity with injection molded detail, I think this is pretty compelling evidence that it indeed has. And that should become even more apparent when I get some primer on these dudes. 
So with those 10 miniatures down, I decided to take inventory of my remaining bits to figure out how much more I need to print off. And it was at this point I noticed too that there aren't enough plastic arms included in the GW kit to cover every single weapons option. So I was going to have to get creative here. I decided to print off a bunch of the Nemestrike arms and try my luck with those. There's a good selection of them, so I hoped I could find some combinations that might work. However, the way they've been designed doesn't really work very well with the GW bits. The Nemestrike arms effectively end at the elbow in a pin where the then printed forearm and hand would attach. So some modifications will be in order. I opened up one of the Nemestrike hands in Microsoft's 3D Builder lopped off the hand and hoped that by printing a bunch of these off and attaching them to the arms, they'd give me enough forearm to work with that I could get the job done. Well, I struggled through assembling one of these two-handed halberd weapons, since finding arm combos that would line up right just wasn't proving easy. And so I decided to try another tactic, modifying the plastic bits. What remaining arms I had left on the sprues I used for all the two-handed guns, leaving just a bunch of two-handed halberds and swords. These I modified by scraping away one of the two hands, effectively turning them into a single-hand posed weapon. And this actually worked out pretty great. Another benefit to this too was it now meant I could make use of all these extra hands that came in the box. I also realized that GW didn't include enough magazines for all the storm bolters in the box. So again, I fired up 3D Builder, dropped in a Nemestrike gauntlet, and lopped the magazine off so I could use printed ones instead. This went off without a hitch. All up, I was able to put together an additional 14 Grey Knights with the help of these printed proxy bits until I ran out of weapons. All that was left to do was attach all the little greeblies, and I chose to bias these more toward the majority printed marines to help them blend in that little extra bit. Out of the whole strike box, the only parts left over are two front torso pieces. That's it. Literally every other bit in this box is now on a miniature, and that is super satisfying. So, with the help of 3D printing, I was able to squeeze an additional 24 minis out of this one box for a total of 34 Grey Knights. And, in total, the amount of printed bits was 20 heads, 24 torsos, 24 legs, 14 power packs, 42 shoulder pads, 24 bases, 20 arms, and 6 storm bolter magazines. That was everything I needed in addition to the GW bits to build what is essentially an entire army. Now I'm going to go ahead and slap some primer on these so that they all look the same, and we'll see how well the proxy bits fit in with the official bits, and if they all work together and look cohesive with some paint on them. I hope you've enjoyed watching this one. Please let me know down below if you've got a box of miniatures sitting on your shelf that you think could go a lot further with the help of 3D printing, just like this Strike Squad box has. I'd be curious to know what other ideas people have. Also, if you want to support the channel, I've got a Colts 3D store where you can pick up some terrain SDLs for your war games. And also, you might be interested to know that DMG Minis is actually remastering his Nemestrike Marines kit next month. So if you're interested in that, uh, consider joining his Patreon for August. I myself am very keen to see what he does. Alright, thanks again for watching, and see you all again next time. <laughs>